last video in a series of three about the Wilson LP Woods. This time it's the LP Hybrid. As with most modern products, this thing is promising the earth, but we're going to put it through its paces, test it, and see if it can deliver on some of those promises. Now, the first claim from Wilson is this thing is going to cue at your slice. Now, they did that with a driver in the fairwood, and to be fair, it did limit the curvature on the ball. They're suggesting that they're going to cue your slice by putting a little bit of a weight pad in the heel of the club, which should have a closing effect through impact. And there is also moderate offset, which to be honest, when I'm putting the club down on the ground, isn't that obvious at all. It'd be interesting to see if that has any real effect. Now, the second one is a bit of an odd one. Not really come across this before. They're saying that the loft and the length have been optimized. Um, whatever that means. So this has got 19 and a half degrees. That's the only loft that you can actually get in this hybrid, and I believe it's 41 inches in length. They're saying that that is unique. There isn't another product on the market doing that. But then I guess somebody could come along and say 19 degrees and 41 and a half inches. So I don't know whether I'm going to be able to test whether that's optimal or not. Maybe a test robot could, but I'm no robot. Then the last claim is that this thing is super light and super fast. Now the head component is light, the shaft is incredibly light, what we're talking here, 68 grams, so that's pretty light for a hybrid, and we've got an incredibly light grip as well. So all those things combined mean the overall dead weight of this club is pretty light. The lighter the club gets, it should be easier to swing it faster. Again, if I was to get an extra mile an hour or two out of this, I'd be quite surprised. Am I going to be able to measure that? So let's hit some balls, let's check out these features and see if they're actually going to help you hit the ball better. I've set a shot up here at Sawgrass, number 16. Not as famous and spectacular as 17, the par three, of course, but this is a tricky shot. We've got water down the right-hand side, we've got pot bunkers littered around the green. It's not an easy shot from 240 out, so it's gonna put me to the test and this hybrid to the test as well. Now, in the first few shots, I'm gonna try and determine whether I can sense this club's draw bias. Is the weight heel or the offset having any real influence on ball flight? Let's see if we can determine that. Let's hit a few shots into this hole. I'm not gonna try and override this club. I'm gonna swing this as naturally as I can and let the golf club do what it wants. It's certainly drawing quite heavily. Started straight, this looks like left-hand bunkers. No, that's not disastrous, it's not too bad. Quite a lot of heavy movement in the air, right to left. And sometimes in testing situations like this, it's difficult to determine whether it was me, the player, and the delivery of the club that caused that ball to move from right to left that aggressively, or was it something to do with the club? It's probably more to do with the player than the club, but the club probably enhanced it. It's not often I see the ball move that aggressively from right to left in the air. <coughs> that's not to say I always hit it straight, mind you as you've probably seen from previous videos. Let's have another go. Let's see if we can get this a bit closer. A little bit lowish on the face. Probably gonna come up a little short left, I think. Oh, oh, friendly bounce off the tree. Definite movement again in the air from right to left. So again, definite movement in the air, like I said. Strike was a little bit low on the face, so the spin rate went up a little bit. That's why the ball climbed a little bit higher and didn't get the carry that I was expecting. So that was the user error rather than the club making that happen. Let's have another go. Struck better. Definite movement again, aggressive movement right to left. Through the tree. So three shots, all three fairly heavy draws, and I can say to, with, it, with some degree of certainty, that that's not just me. That's my normal shape, but this feels as though it's enhancing it. When I say feels like it's enhancing it, I'm not necessarily feeling that face closure through the shot, um, but I'm certainly seeing it with the result. Let's have one more go, and then we'll start talking about this optimal length loft and the lightness of the club and see if that gives me any club speed. Straighter, but again, moving quite aggressively. Straighter start line, but quite popular spot over there for me today. So part one of the test, absolutely for certain. If you're somebody that hits the ball with a fade or a slice and you're wanting to limit that, this is definitely worth checking out if you're looking for a hybrid, because there's no two ways about it. It's doing something to close the club face more than it would normally for me. Now, the next part is gonna be tricky for me to test. 
Uh, Wilson have tested this quite in depth by all accounts and have found that this 19 and a half degrees with this length of shaft is the most easy hit or easy to hit combination for handicap players above a 10 handicap. Now I'd have to see that research data to, to tell you whether they were telling the truth or not. I'm certain that they aren't lying so we're going to go with what they're saying um, and it is easier to hit. Now I can't really test that unless I was going to start sort of shaving sort of half inch increments of the shaft and start cranking the neck to change the loft. Well, I'm not going to do that because this golf club doesn't belong to me. It was given to me by Wilson or lent to me by Wilson to hit. I'm not being paid by for this. They're not giving me the golf club either. So I can't really determine whether that's true or not myself. I'm just going to believe Wilson. One of the problems with Wilson coming out with that statement is the manufacturing tolerances on loft. Now you would think that all of the heads come off the conveyor belt the same loft, but they don't. There is fluctuations in the loft when they're coming off the conveyor belt. For some manufacturers that can be up to kind of a degree and a half, two degrees sometimes. So is this 19 and a half degrees? I suppose I'd have to measure it. I don't have the measuring device at hand to do that. Um, so let's just trust that it is 19 and a half degrees and the length is as it says, and let's just trust Wilson on that one. And it's much the same, to be honest, with regards to their claims of speed. Because as I said, the head component, shaft component, and grift component are very light, and there's no two ways about it. The dead weight of this golf club is very light. Subsequently, it should be easier to swing fast. Can I measure whether I can swing this more quickly? Well, I'd have to have a golf club of the same length at a different weight to be able to determine that, and I don't have that golf club. So again, that's not something that I'm capable of testing. But I'm gonna hit three or four shots just to see what the golf club speed actually is. That's actually a better shot. Club speed on that one, 98.1 miles per hour. And for the length of the golf club, that kind of doesn't seem to be that far off. What I would expect. Driver, I'm in and around about the 110 mile an hour mark. So if I can get this somewhere in and around the 100 miles an hour mark, that kind of seems to make sense to me because it is obviously shorter than a driver. And as you lose a, a, approximately an inch, we'll take maybe two miles an hour off a club, somewhere in that vicinity. Horrible shot. Where's the drive bias gone? And taking my current driver and this, we've got approximately five inches of difference. It's pretty much five inches bang on. So I would be expecting to be losing between somewhere like six to 10 miles an hour of club speed over the driver. And I swing, like I said, this on average about, around about the 110 mark. Some, sometimes it's a little bit higher. So I've been doing my push-ups, et cetera. <laughs> So I'm expecting this to be around about the 100 mile an hour mark. Let's get this another whack. That last one was 98 and a half. This is a better shot. This is going to be the best shot of the bunch. Again, that draw bias kicking in. Lovely. You could even be on the green. Hallelujah. Put for an eagle. Club speed on that one, 99 miles an hour. So it's in and around where I'd expect it to be. And again, if you gave me an identical length club with a slightly different swing weight and overall dead weight, then we could start making a comparison. But I haven't got nothing to compare this with. Again, I'm just going to trust what Wilson are saying. Now let's have a little chat about the aesthetics of this club. What it's like to swing, and what it feels like. If I was to summarise the appearance of this golf club without sounding too harsh to Wilson, I would say that it was a little bit boring to be honest there's nothing about this golf club which is kind of catching your eye um, if it was in the rack in the pro shop that being said it's not an ugly golf club to look at it's just not that striking it's quite bland it's all black and white some people might like that I don't mind it I don't really like clubs that are too flashy you know trying to kind of show off just going buy me buy me buy me. behind the ball when I first received this I was unimpressed it's got to be said I didn't like the appearance of the club it looked quite round behind the ball 
sort of roll on the face is quite obvious, in particular because of these white paint lines, those make the roll of the face more exaggerated um, from your perspective as you're looking down at the ball. I didn't like that, it made the club look quite round. The offset is minimal, so it's not too off-putting. I don't like clubs with large amounts of offset. It makes me feel as though the ball's gonna go aggressively left, and I almost always overcorrect and start hitting these sort of push cuts. So I'm not all that mad on offset, but the offset is quite minimal. But as it is with most reviews and reviewers on YouTube, we've got to understand that Wilson aren't aiming this golf club at me. You know, they didn't spend all the money to develop in this golf club for me. So it's not going to sort of tick all of the boxes for me, but it may tick all the boxes for you. So it's something that you've got to go out there to your pro shop or golf retailer and have a, a good look at this and see what you think to it. It feels very solid when it's being swung. Uh, I like the fact that there's no adjustability at the neck. I'm never that keen on those clubs, to be honest. I'd much prefer a glued neck. It makes the club feel like a solid unit, in my opinion. And does it feel light to swing? That's obviously one of Wilson's bigger claims, is that this golf club is extremely light to swing. I don't think you necessarily pick up on that when you're swinging it, because the swing weight is going to be fairly standard. It's the overall dead weight that is light, but you'll probably feel the swing weight when you're swinging it. So it just feels like a fairly standard weighted club to me. Um, so there's no real difference in sensation when you're swinging it with regards to the weight. So if you're maybe put off by this um, claims of being ultra light because you don't like the sensation of swinging a light golf club, this to me doesn't feel light when you're swinging it. I'm not a bit, I'm not a shaftoid by any stretch of anybody's imagination. Um, I think the shaft it doesn't actually play as much of a role as what some people would like to think it does. So I'm never that bothered about the shaft. As long as it's not overly whippy, I'm not too concerned. Uh, or overly stiff, as long as it feels as though there's a little bit of flex in it, I'm usually quite happy. And this shaft felt absolutely great. Um, I didn't pick up on a massive amount of twisting when I've hit some more balls and hit some slight off-center hits. The shaft feels very solid, but then I would expect that from UST who have been making shafts for decades and been making high-grade shafts as well. So if they're getting it wrong at this stage, somebody needs sacking. And maybe the least important thing, because this is probably the easiest thing for you to change, is the grip. Lampkin grip, very light grip. I can't take it often with it. Um, but we're going to trust Lampkin and Wilson that it is a very, very light grip. And it feels okay. It's not the grippiest or tackiest grip I've ever felt, but it's okay. It's fine. It's going to do the job. And once there's a glove on your hand, it actually feels as though there's plenty of grip there. But people have preferences with grips. So if you want to change the grip, that's a fairly simple and cost-effective thing to do. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so some more reviews and some swing tips coming very soon.